somewhere out there, Pennywise is talking about what? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wait a minute. Y'all remember me? Y'all, y'all, y- y- your favorite clown right here, Pennywise? Y'all, y'all remember me, right? Y'all, <laughs> I'm the scary clown. Yeah, 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 y'all, y'all still talking about me, right? Come on, y'all. Get, get. Pennywise, he like, F- I just got upstaged. You know, if there's one clown out there that can upstage Pennywise, it's that joke. Uh, Murray, one small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? We're going to be at Catch One. And as usual, it's going to be a great night. A night full of comedy, some games, some crowd participation with you guys. I got to say, who has, a, who has a, a great facial structure for the Joker? You know, even with not the proper makeup that we've seen. But even looking underneath there, it's like, damn, you know, if he did decide to go the traditional route for the Joker then that would be great. But that's not what we have here, man. You know, we're, we're getting more realistic with this. And as crazy as the Joker is and as murderous as he is and as much of a psychopath that, that he is, you know, he's killed so many people. You think that he finally get a rated R movie at some point. Yeah. It hasn't happened until now. They got this one movie that they say is going to be a one-off. Consider it like, you know, just a one-off graphic novel in a way. That is finally rated R. That is more realistic than what we've been getting. And some people are even saying more dramatic, more artistic. Just all these things that you've never really seen to this extent with a comic book property. And a lot of people saying, well, you know, that's, that's so different. I'm not sure if that'll even work. <laughs> you know, you need, at this point, you're not even a comic book movie. Yeah, it does seem that way. Yeah, you know, you all in this gangster shit. You know, this is a drama now. You know, where's Batman? You know, where's the superpowers? You know, where the super villains at? You know, I want. I, I can. I can watch. Look, I can. I can watch a man wear clown makeup any day. <laughs> you know? Can you though? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I, I don't I'm, follow you when the show's I'm sure if you <laughs> seek it out, <laughs> you'll find it. When I was a little boy and told people I was going to be a comedian, everyone laughed at me. Well, no one's laughing now. You can say that again. You set yourself up. <laughs> no. you walk, <laughs> damn, you're terrible. You walk right into that one. <laughs> I get chills as I watch this trailer, man. I, you know, I, and I had, I gotta tell you, I have my doubts, and I haven't seen the movie yet. But just seeing what they, you know, I, seeing what they're able to do, and going out and because this seems to take comic book movies to another level, mm-hmm. right here. You know, this is this is this is showing at Toronto Film Festival, it's showing at, at, at in Venice, uh, and you know what they're doing with. Uh, with this right here is they are, you know, this is another attempt to like fully legitimate. Oh, did I forget to say shit? Oh boy, I get, my mind is blown. Why am I sitting up here trying to be all calm about this? God damn, man, I didn't have any confidence in this right here. And I, I and I got to tell you, this is taking me back to the time where I, when they said, you what, you want to do Batman more realistic? What the f- you talking about? <laughs> Batman and realism don't even belong together. They don't even get along with each other. I was like, maybe there's this whole thing of trying to make these properties more realistic that is taking them into new territories. Now, we don't need to see all of these like this. No, it, it won't work with, with all of them. But the the Joker and even Batman to a degree is grounded enough to where you can do a movie like this. Yeah. Yeah, no, you can. And I got to tell you, I'm impressed that they were able to take something as exaggerated as the Joker and have me buy into it as something of a... Of a very grounded and uh, realistic, and somewhat of a very sympathetic character. Yeah. You know, this is the first time I've ever seen them take, you know, r- rarely even with a superhero, but with a villain. Mm-hmm. You know, take it to this level of where, where I, you know, I feel, I feel emotional and sympathetic and sad for this character. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, which will make it all that much harder if they're going the route that they say with the violence and the disturbing images that we'll see in the film later on. 
Uh, I, you know, I, I think the trailer is great for a lot of reasons. Before I get into that, I will, so I can just get one criticism out the way. You know, it is one of those movies where, it, at least by looking at the trailer, it's like, it's just, they lay on thick that the world hates him. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's I like, know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, to, to, that's the only thing I can say, like, to get that point across, you know, everybody <laughs> hates this guy for, for no reason. Like, he's, he's actually trying to spread happiness. Hey, can you please stop bothering my kid? That kid's like, shut the f up, man. Nobody asked you. Yeah, I was having a good time. Bro. Yeah, at least he's entertaining. More than beast riding around your grumpy ass. You know, I wonder, because we see that, and we and we, there is that feeling of like, come on, that guy's just do it. You do that all the time with kids when they look at you. You make faces and make them laugh. Yeah, exactly. But, but that's this edit. Maybe we see more of this he's, scene. Yeah, maybe he's doing, being weird. Yeah, doing yeah. some shit where you're like, yeah, yeah. lady, get, grab your kid. Change seats. Yeah. Maybe, you know, and by the way, don't with anybody who looks like Shirley from What's Happening. You know? <laughs> I mean, you know. Well, she's going to be sassy. Yeah, just a, a big black woman riding the bus probably don't want to be with and don't want to have her kid mess with either. You know what I'm saying? What I like about this is that this trailer really is not showing you a whole lot of uh, uh, of stuff. Which it's is, really not. I mean, I mean, there's, there's great imagery and stuff. There is potential, but... I, I look at it and I go, I'm still not getting a real sense of what's happening here. Yeah. You know, I, I believe this week or maybe it was last week. This is after they, they, they did a report talking about how the Joker, and I'll just read the, I'll just read the caption right here. Uh, it's the latest com comic book film to get slapped with an R rating, according to the movie's website and multiple other reports. Uh, it's getting a rated R for strong, bloody violence, disturbing behavior, language, and brief sexual images now you get hints of some disturbing things going on but the, all that violence that they're talking about mm -hmm. you know none of that is being shown not none of that was really shown in the first trailer and they're kind of not showing you too much what they show from that first trailer you know they're adding just a few more things to show character but they're still uh, oh, I don't, I don't want this woman <laughs> Uh, you know, they're adding you just they're, they're adding just a few more things to show character and they're adding just a few more things to show you that, yeah, you know, he is a disturbed person. And these are the reasons why it's led to that. But the true nature of what he probably turns into, the true nature of the film, as far as violence and the disturbing levels it will go to, that's not shown at all, mm -hmm. which means that, you know, this thing is probably ready to explode when we see it, man. You know, I think they're taking the Marvel route with this where. You've only seen just a, a, a fraction of what's happening in that movie. Mm -hmm. You should show just enough to where it not only gets you excited, it gives you enough character to where you want to. You don't know too much about it, but you know you know the basics. You know you know what you've been uh, you know you present you, what you've been <coughs> presented to in a very short amount of time. You know, but you want to go to the movie to learn about this character mm -hmm. and the situation. But you know. Uh, uh, it also leaves room for a lot of guessing and a lot of, you know, sitting around trying to make predictions, which is fun, man. I mean, when I was a kid, you know, we, that's what we would do with trailers. We sit around and just try to figure out what's happening in the movie. You know, we figure out our own stories. Yeah. We, you know, we try to figure out the ending of the film. We were wrong all the time. Yeah, I was going to say, well, okay, so when you try and you go see the film and you were wrong, then you got, hey, you got to enjoy what you made up. And got to enjoy it. Oh, but here's the real story that I wasn't ready for. Yeah. But and, how is yeah. it when you you predict it and then you go see it and it's exactly what you predicted? Oh, I feel good. <laughs> Do <laughs> like, you? Yeah, I'm like. To me, that's like, oh, well, I expect them to be more clever than me. I, you, you know I, what? I, that, you, was, that wasn't worth it. See, I'm, and, and believe me, you do not want that to happen. You better fool me because if you don't, I'm getting up in the theater. I told y'all. <laughs> told y'all this was happening. I said it. <laughs> we don't know you. Shut up. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> so you better hope I'm wrong with what I'm predicting right here, because that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull up some theories, man. You know, like we usually do. Do break down the trailer. All right. Have fun with some predictions, some theories, and I think the trailer is perfect for that. It leaves a lot of room for that. You know, I think the majority of this movie is taken from two sources, uh, two uh, uh, two main influences and four sources actually. The okay. two main influences that I'm looking at right here are the comics and Martin Scorsese. Yeah. And they've already talked about how 
Because I see a lot of King of Comedy in here. Yeah, it's a lot of King of Comedy, but the look of it, you know, the look of it, they're going back to, they, and this is intentional. You know, uh, Todd Phillips says, I'm aiming for a look that is heavily influenced by Martin Scorsese and his film Mean Streets. Mm -hmm. But moreover, uh, uh, Taxi Driver, you know, uh, uh, going back to that, Taxi Driver, which was made in the, this is 70s, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, we're going back to like dirty, uh, grimy 70s New York, even though the movie itself is set in the 80s. And, uh, and you know, and that's, uh, uh, you know, you're, and you're right. If you really uh, look at it, you know, the, the, there are very, very much elements of King, King, uh, King of, the, the King of Comedy in mm -hmm. there. You know, guys struggling to, not only be a comedian, but a comedian that is loved by millions of people. His name is Rupert Pupkin. He lives in a world of make-believe. Oh, Jerry, I love this guy. Always coming up with these great lines. I love him. I love him. Nobody can remember his name. Crazy ass. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to walls. <laughs> They're not real, man. <laughs> the character elements of that combined with you know the very, and this is where it gets disturbing. You know uh, the the very disturbing character elements of uh, Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. Taxi Driver. That's what I said. <laughs> Filmed by Martin Scorsese. Yeah, people do anything in front of a taxi driver. I mean anything. It's like you're not even there. It's like you know, like a taxi driver doesn't even exist. You know, there's that wanting to be loved, and also that feeling of being a loner and shunned by society, like Travis Bickle. Mm -hmm. And you know the character that's in Taxi Driver, Travis Bickle. I think it's about as you forty years old, is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Travis Bickle does something so insane, and somehow manages to become a hero for it. Uh huh. And I don't think that the the character here uh, in the movie of uh, what's his name, Arthur Fleck. Yeah, is it Arthur Fleck? Yeah, I, I don't think that the character here is going to become a hero, but I think he's going to do something. I think he's going to do something similar. I think he's going to do something that's completely crazy and it will it will uh start this movement. And you know, you see people in this clip, all these people wearing masks. Yeah. And he's going to finally feel like, you know, yeah, I'm I'm nuts, but look at what I've done. You know, look at the I've I've, I've accomplished something. I'm getting recognized. People are people are are you know, maybe they don't know me directly, but they know that I, that, you know, th they know my work. They know something I've done. Well, I've had, a, I have, a, I've had a mark on the world. Yeah, it's like he's starting something like anonymous, where everybody's wearing those V for Vendetta mask, and you know, just it, like, hey, let's let's spread entropy and chaos. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that he's, uh, you know, he does something that is is uh, is is insane. I think he does something that that is violent, and I think he he will do something. That is uh, that we will find kind of morally wrong or at least challenging, but for him, it'll be like you know, so what? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, people know me, and I've made and and I and I've made a you know I've made somewhat a difference in the world. But uh, there's another influence in here from Taxi Driver that I think is that you can probably take a look at and see uh, the potential of happening. You know, if we if we really going to take these influences heavy. Uh, the other is, uh, you know, you're talking about sexual images and, you know, you're talking about, uh, our, our, maybe not images, but sexual material in here. Uh, you know that um, they say that the love interest will be uh, another person who's kind of a comic book veteran right now, uh, Zazie Beats. Right. That is not her. That cannot be her real name. Zazzy Beats. <laughs> Sound like she'd be selling headphones or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not buying it. <laughs> yeah, isn't like, her last name spelled like B E E T Z? Yeah. 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 That, that, that ain't a real last name. Yeah. B E E T Z. You're like a rapping vegetable. Or <laughs> Beats. First of all, in the movie, just her even having an interest in, in uh, Arthur Fleck, or who would later be the Joker. That's disturbing on its own. Right. It just don't look right. She looked like she got a homeless man fetish or something, you know, because he's just greasy. She's hot, and he's all greasy, got bad hair. He's all scrawny and shit. It's like the age difference between them is it, 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 it Look, I didn't say that. He said he's, he's Puerto Rican. Yeah, he's Puerto Rican. You know, <laughs> you don't, man, don't try to do that to me. Ugh, she's kissing a skinny Puerto Rican. Ugh. Yeah, no, you look at that and you go, that's just wrong. That's yeah. It's just uh. 
Yeah, that 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 is that that's a fetish I don't want to get into. <laughs> I don't want to see. Yeah, maybe she's really into clowns. Yeah. It's like I was on Pornhub and dick just went soft. <laughs> or or she's all into fixing broken things. Yeah, yeah. Well what I well what I think is is that um, you know, look, man, she might be on a hard rebound or something, yeah. but she's fought, she fought in this in this hard, hard city of Gotham. His his one man who cares. It's it, where where you know this hard city of Gotham, where you know angry black women ride the bus, <laughs> <You know? laughs> can't find any kindness. She finds somebody that no, she finds somebody that actually cares. Mm -hmm. She finds somebody that is you know that. In this hard world, he's you know he um, he's trying to make people. He's laugh. a sweet person. He yeah. wants to make you know he wants to make the world a better place by making people happy. And people just keep you know they they just keep walking all over this guy. And listen, yeah, we can you know and and I think with that we will probably root for them as up as that looks right there. But I think at some point, uh, you know, she's gonna be like, okay, you you know, this is just too weird. Yeah, he's gonna do something. He's going to do something crazy. He's going to do something really strange and really weird, and that is going to push her away. Ah, taxi driver. Tra ta exactly. Uh, Sil what's her name? Silver Shepherd. Silver Se Shepherd. God damn it. Si Silver Sil Surfer. Silver <laughs> Shepherd. Silver Shepherd. If you God damn Silver Shepherd. Yes. Don't make me say it six more times. <laughs> Just one more time. Does she sell seashells by the seashell? Silver <laughs> <laughs> Shepherd. The South Central. <laughs> Sybil Shepard. Uh, you, if you've seen Taxi Driver, there's that scene where her and uh, and, and Travis Bickler hitting it off. Yeah, she's they got, they got chemistry. They got chemistry, and then he decides to take hey, her to take a, to the movies. Yeah, take her to the movies. Yeah, take okay. her to a porn flick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, there's that scene in there which is really uncomfortable, and she just yeah, she just like I'm I've had enough. I'm out. You know, he can't and he can't figure it out. Yeah, yeah. He's he, yeah. He's like I don't understand. He's socially inept. Mm -hmm. You know he's he doesn't understand. I think that that'll be that is something that we and it'll be heartbreaking for us too because you know it'd be the one thing that yeah, could. What's like, that? Oh, he doesn't understand though. Give he, give him another yeah. chance. Explain it to him. I would be like, yeah, girl. I know. What, what I, were you doing in the first place? I know. I know. I remember being young, going like, oh, he didn't know. But now I'd be like, nah, nah, ain't no loose. excuse. Yeah. Nah, no, nah, he's gonna do something. If, if he'll do this. He's going to do other shit yeah. later. No, he doesn't get it. He's he, even, you know, he's the same way. He's socially inept. He mm -hmm. does. He's he's not been around enough people to know how to pr properly court somebody. And he's going to do something to weird this girl out. And she's going to be like, get the f out of my house. Right. And and it's going to be heartbreaking, man. Well, do you get the impression he's going to be, uh, well, I don't know if I, Norman Bates is the right thing, but where he's just up under his mom the whole time. And then yes. Like, yep. Yeah, I believe. And, you know, that plays into, uh, that plays right into what we're talking about here now. Because uh, you know the the other two influences that we're going to talk about are comic book properties, which are Batman: The Killing Joke mm -hmm. and The Dark Knight Returns. And uh, you could probably figure it out very easily from The Killing Joke. I mean, you know that one's simple, and the, the influences are obvious in here. Sure. Uh, and I think they've taken, you know, they, I think they've taken uh, cues from The Killing Joke and tried to make a better version of it. You know, The Killing Joke. If you don't know, I mean, very simply put, it's how the Joker became the Joker because, you know, the whole tagline is, you know, what happens to somebody who happens to have the worst day of their life mm -hmm. and it changes them forever. Or in the, the case of this character, Joaquin Phoenix, or you just have a, you know, not just a bad day, but a completely bad life. Mm -hmm. It's a very uh, uh, obvious choice, especially when you consider, like, uh, in The Killing Joke, the Joker was a failed comedian. Mm -hmm. It's what we have right here. It's the same thing. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, this is very heavily influenced by the... Uh, by the killing joke, but you know the the other similarities the similarities that are in there is that you hit that was he in the, under the influence of his mother, and yeah I think his mother is sick, probably mentally, and uh, and and physically too, mm -hmm. and I think what happens is is that the thing that pushes him closer to snapping is that his mother is because uh, mother's probably not all she ain't all right you know she's yeah. kind of in the head too and. and they take her away from him. They say, "Well, shit, we can't have two crazy people trying to <laughs> trying to raise each other." You know? uh, so I think they're gonna take her uh, take her away from him. Uh, now she might go to like uh, you know a, a hospice or you know taken to like a, a you know a, a, what do you call it a, a a retirement center or something. Or she might be so mentally off that they, that she's in Arkham. Oh. And if they take and if they and imagine if she's in Arkham and 
he doesn't have her to to uh, to to balance him. And what if she and what if she's taken away from him and he feels like she's not getting the care that she uh, yeah that that she got when she was with me and she dies. Mm-hmm. You know that's enough to push him further into mental illness. Uh, and that's very close to the killing joke where, you know, instead of having uh, the mother in the killing joke, you had the wife yeah. who dies and he has to try to figure out how to carry on. But, you know, that's just a heavy burden to take, man. That just helps him snap. Uh, but I see what you're talking about. And, right? and the wife was pregnant, too, right? Yeah, yeah. No, the, the, the wife is pregnant. It, yeah. And, yeah, and he comes <laughs> back and the police are like, oh, man, sorry, the, the something burned in the house. The, the whole house burned up. Your wife is dead. Yeah, and he wasn't even there to see it, yeah. you know. Uh, that's which would be the case here. His mom is dead, and he, she he probably wasn't there for. Her. He feels like he feels completely helpless. Helpless. He feels like he let her down. Uh, and most of most of all, there's just no one there to keep. You know, that's probably the one thing that was keeping him stable mm-hmm. is his mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, now, now they took her away. His ass is just loose. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> one of the streets dressed up like a clown. <laughs> the connection that I see to the Dark Knight, though. Oh, when he the, oh, the whole talk show thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the one where uh, you know we see uh, uh, see him going, David Letterman. Yeah, you know we, there, there's that in the trailer. Let's see if I can pull it up here. You know we, well, first of all, in the trailer, uh, you got that whole thing where he's being, you know, he's being mocked. He's being mocked by uh, Robert De Niro's character, who is, you know, uh, old pro talk show host, comedian. When I was a little boy and told people I was going to be a comedian, everyone laughed at me. Well, no one's laughing now. You can say that again, pal. He's making fun of his ass while he's in a room with his dying mommy. He's like, bitch, I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. You can't take a little roast in <laughs> <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Not when in my dying mama's room. I, I want to think of this as the sequel to The King of Comedy. Where, yeah, where things worked out for Rupert Pumpkin, <laughs> and he did get his own show. <laughs> Some people even saying that. So there's been there's uh there been people online who are saying that uh that that you know of course people you know they come up with their own theories yeah. and whatnot. But people on, been online saying like yeah Rupert Pumpkin now now look at him <laughs> let him get famous and he, he created the Joker <laughs> asshole. <laughs> no, that's that part in the comics where uh you know I, it, well also you see in the in the trailer where somehow some kind of way. I don't know how it is, but he makes it on to De Niro's show, and I I don't think he ever gave up that grudge. Oh no, you you can see it in his face. No, he's he head tilted. He, and like, uh-huh. Yeah, he's like, you sure you don't recognize me? <laughs> Good, because I was in the hospital watching you. You didn't see me. <laughs> yeah, and I think he's gonna get on that show, and he's gonna either he's gonna uh, he's gonna he's gonna attempt to kill him, or he's gonna actually kill him. Yeah. And it's going to be like that scene from The Dark Knight where he went in the room and everybody thought he was playing. He's like, I'm going to kill everybody in this room. And they're like, well, that's darn rude. <laughs> <laughs> and he does. Now, I don't think that uh, what we'll have here, I don't, I don't think that you'll see a mass killing like, in, like it was in The Dark Knight. Uh, you know, for one thing, that was done in a very comic book way. You know, what I do think you'll see is, uh, and plus, Nobody's gonna show mass shootings in a theater. Not yeah, not not not, not, not today. No, no, no. You, no nobody you know, wants to see that. I think he will uh, probably actually kill uh, Rob De Niro's character, and for some reason, I don't know how, I don't know why, but that's maybe people just didn't really like this guy. <laughs> maybe this guy was sending off the wrong message, and, and that's what that's what got got Project Mayhem started. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, or, you know, or, or, you know, that's part of it or something. You know, this it's something that he did in this in this really violent crime has resonated with people for some reason. Well, there was another guy who looked like he might have been a politician who was who That's Thomas Wayne. Oh, that's Thomas Wayne. Yeah, okay. that's that's the big Batman connection and okay. you know, and and the cool thing about Thomas Wayne, yeah, uh, it's a really brief Batman connection that that they thought would make sense and they could they could, they could get away with because you know they don't want to bring in any superhero type element at least what it looks like so far. So yeah, if you bring in Thomas Wayne and maybe you know either you know at this at this point uh, Bruce Wayne is just a kid. It's a joke to you. <laughs> Shut the f- <laughs> <laughs> After I take my son to the theater, I'm coming back for <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> <laughs> and I think like maybe he's done something before that got people excited. Uh, 
And I, I believe that uh I believe that at the end of the movie, he'll actually be in uh he'll actually be in Arkham Asylum. And he'll be, you know, he'll be like, Hey, look, yeah, I'm I I, I you know what? Uh Whatever he's done, maybe he maybe killed uh, Robert De Niro. I don't know. And then that's when he taken to Arkham Asylum. But what'll happen is he'll look at the work and he'll be like, you know, I've done something. I mean, I'm f-ing insane, mm-hmm. but I but I've done something. And he'll be looking from Arkham's uh, Arkham's window, or he'll see a TV or something. He'll see the world and the impact that he left with all these people wearing clown makeup or mask or whatever. One of the things that uh, Joaquin Phoenix said, and John, I was just talking about this. Uh, he says, I don't want to do a sequel. He's like, this is it. He's yeah. like, you know, I, I, I've been asked to do some DC stuff before. I've probably been asked to do some Marvel stuff. I, I don't, want, I don't want to be tied down with all this superhero shit. Well, and that's that's one of the most encouraging things to me because when a movie comes out and they've already announced this, you know, they've greenlit sequels. Yeah. Well, then you you know your character's safe. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that takes a lot of the suspense out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he'll die in this. I think he'll be locked up in uh, Ar- uh, in Arkham at the end, and uh, you know, and and yet. Even though I'm locked in here, I'm still out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, by being more real, they're able to tackle bigger issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they're able to tackle real social issues with this. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that I that I that I look at here is that uh, what, you know, uh, this is the first time that we've seen the. The, the Joker this way, and I think that's the, the reason why that they they pushed this disturbing, mentally ill side of him. Because you know, one of the things that they really want to get across with this trailer, besides a different tone, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, the potential of it being rated R or hard R. Uh, one of the things they also want to push is like, hey, look, y'all thought it could never be done. They said you ain't gonna ever be Heath Ledger, and like. No, we're not, but we can still get an Oscar. Oh, and by the way, the suit, it wasn't cheap. You ought to know, you bought it. That's it. I want to hear proposition. Sit your black ass down. (laughs) 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 I love that. He's like, hey, man. (laughs) Listen to your master. (laughs) You know, know, what they want to do, they want to push that, yeah, you know, ain't nobody scared of Heath Ledger. <laughs> you know, we he did his thing. Somebody can still come across and do theirs. And they're really talking about how th- this could be uh, uh, an Oscar potential performance. And they really want to nail that. Well, I mean, it could be in as much as, you know, he is playing someone who's handicapped, uh, which is Oscar bait in itself. But I, I see where the an angle they're going with this is the with the uh, they're going with the, the changing way we're looking at mental health. Yeah, because always yeah. before, you know, I mean, it still exists to a degree, but right now it's an insult to tell somebody like, "Man, you're crazy. You you're being crazy. That what you just said was crazy." And it's like, "Hey, man, we got to back off of, of of looking at things that way." Oh, we can't call people crazy now. Yeah. Damn, man, that's kind of not cool. Don't st- <laughs> don't say the c word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> <You're> <laughs> that's the word I was actually oh, talking about. Oh, you know. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> crazy don't sound so bad. Uh, <laughs> anyway, you, you know, call me crazy. <laughs> call me crazy. It's one more thing to uh, <laughs> draw a magnifying glass to the the uh, mental health crisis that we have. Well, I think that that's why they well, have at least making know, people more sympathetic to it. Well, see, that is why they have the potential to be Oscar worthy here mm-hmm. because. Listen, we've had all kind of jokers, and some of them have worked great, and some of them not worked so great. Most of them have been fine. You know, we've had our funny jokers. We've had our, you know, our gangster jokers. We had our gangsta joker right there, and that's where it went wrong because they didn't know what to do with that joker. They were just trying to fit an amalgamation of all these other jokers. They were trying to fit all, you know, what we've seen with other jokers, and they just tried to put tattoos on it. Because we're talking about that's another reason why they want to push the character here, not only just for the Oscars, but they also want to push it because they're saying, well, you know, what what Jared Leto, and it wasn't his fault. What they failed to do is they evolved on a look that became nonsense because there was no meaning behind it. Yeah. The character devolved. Yeah. It didn't. It did not evolve <laughs> right, anywhere. Right, right. Our Joker is an evolution. You know, out of all the gangster jokers, the, com- the 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 comical jokers, you know, we had the you know the dirty, chaotic, grotesque jokers out there. Um, now we have we we have a Joker here 
that has fully embraced being completely uh, not not crazy since we throw that word around easily. No, being very mentally ill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that's a laugh that's not played for laughs. That's a laugh that's meant to disturb you. That's a laugh that's meant to scare you. That's a laugh that's, that's meant to actually make you make you feel frightened, uneasy, and also probably a little worried for this guy. I mean, maybe. Because I, I look at that and I think it could be the things you said or he could be rehearsing. Well, the one thing that makes me think about him not being, uh, uh, you know, somebody that's rehearsing, or maybe he is, but he did say that, uh, and this could be something to throw you off, because that's a good guess. I think that's, I think that's great. But uh, he also said that he, he studied people, and it's a, it's an article right here. There's a lot of places I have Joe Blow up right here, but he studied people with, uh, with another sort of uh, another illness, and it's uh, it's called PLC, pathological laughter or crying. Oh. Yeah, people just burst out into laughter because of certain conditions and they don't even know why. They burst out, they burst out into crying. And you know, the way that and you know, you seen this trailer where he just is laughing, he can just you know, uh cut it off in a very and, and again in a very disturbing way. <laughs> you know, I don't you know, I I no, he could be rehearsing, could be doing something, but there's also, you know, this whole thing where you say I discovered I I I or I uh, I studied people with this illness. Mm-hmm. They are I think they're trying to be respectful of mental illness because they, you know, they know that they this could be a controversy. Yeah. If there's uh if they if they approach it wrong. I actually think that one of the things they're going to do here is that they're going to uh I think they're going to make a uh and this is why I mean by uh they can do deeper things with this. I think they might be able to make a statement about the condition of healthcare, especially oh, yeah. in the area of mental illness. Oh yeah. You know uh you you see here where he's being told that, you know, we can't treat you anymore. And he's like, see, that's the problem. Y'all ain't listening to me. This is the last time we'll be meeting. You don't listen, do you? You just ask the same questions every week. All I have are negative thoughts. Yeah, we can't help your ass. <laughs> She's like, he gone. <laughs> I think you know that's something that when that's 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 something that's hotly debated right now, healthcare. You know, and that's something that even you know the president is throwing out right now for better or for worse. It's like you know, again, when people when people do a shooting or something, when something goes wrong, now healthcare in the area of mental illness now that's an issue. Yep, they, they bring I, they, they bring it up and then walk away and don't do anything about it. And that's why I think right here, that's the point. It's like you do all this. You, you say you care. You do all these things to to help, and in the end, there's nothing that's really there. You know, it's a system that just shovels people people in and just pushes them right back out with no no real sus- substance to their care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, man, this shit could be deep. <laughs> well, now you said all that. Yeah. It better be. Yeah, and hey, watch it just be. A, it's gonna be an awful film, man. It's gonna be. It's gonna be nothing but about a clown that's mad and going around killing people. <laughs> Ain't gonna be nothing but a, but a clown who got mad somebody kicked him in his nuts. <laughs> They'll pay. <laughs> Kick me in my nuts. They'll pay. <laughs> you know, it, it could be just a Scorsese ripoff and clown makeup. I don't know. You know. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs>